Kelly faves, welcome back. It is Living for the City. I am Cherise. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. Um, so we finished up a couple of weeks of the new year, huh? We got that done. Um, and I feel like we're going strong. Do you agree? Listen, I'm still in relaxation mode. I'm doing okay for the moment. <laughs> Um, so I don't want to jinx it, knock on wood, everything's going well. So hopefully everything is going good in your neck of the woods. Um, so I was thinking, I was going through my phone, um, and so I came across, um, a whole bunch of stuff that I probably should do kind of like a, maybe like a lost footage, right? So I might do like a lost fit footage, lost living for the city footage. Um, cause I have some things that I saw and did last year that, um, I never shared with you because of time or there were certain things that I knew that I was going to say for the new year to share with you. Um, because number one, it wasn't, you know, there was a couple of things that I knew wouldn't be kind of like out of date um, and be like, oh, why is she sharing this? And that was like two years ago. So, um, you know, so I knew there were some things that I was going to hold on to. And today is one of those days. So if you are following my Instagram page, I want to say it was in November. I had a chance to see Michelle Obama at the Wells Fargo Center. Now, I kind of debated um, on if I was going to share my experience with you. I held on to it, right? And so I wanted to see first what we were going to talk about, with, what we were going to talk about, what Michelle and I were going to talk about. So before, you know, I made the decision to kind of throw it out there. And so I did get her book and I had downloaded it like the day, uh, like the day it hit the shelves, I had it. But here's the thing, I didn't read it. I knew I was going to see her and I felt like if I read it, it might spoil something. I didn't even know what she was gonna talk about and I, I was guessing it was the book, right? But some part of me thought that she was gonna talk about politics. I don't know why. So I was like, okay, let me put this down because I wanna see her and I want everything to be fresh. I'm so glad I did that. There were so many people that came out to see her in Philadelphia and I was like, Philly showed up. And, and what I loved the most and I was my girlfriend and she even said the same thing. What I found the most interesting is that every single person that went to that thing, the audience, I mean, everyone was there. Any background, gender, culture, religion, political perspective, every type of person was in that audience. And I was like, that is how much of an impact, right, she has. So let's get started on our, you can call this like a little, uh, a mini book club right about now. <laughs> In sharing my story, I hope to help create space for other stories and other voices. There's power in allowing yourself to be known and heard in owning your unique story, in using your authentic voice. And there's grace in being willing to know and hear others. This, for me, is how we become. We probably all know that she grew up in South Side of Chicago, um, not a very good neighborhood. Um, she talked a lot about, and she goes into this in the book, talked a lot about how her neighborhood and things have changed over the years and i think that philadelphia is can totally relate to this um and how our neighborhoods have changed over the years are and are continuing to change she and talked about growing up in um you know a really really bad neighborhood and how that impacted her life um and fortunately for her um you know, she was able to see past that and kind of, you know, look past all of that negativity and still become um, and move forward and go after what she wanted. I, I, I grew up on the South Side. I know we've got some South Siders. And the South Side of Chicago, my neighborhood is like so many neighborhoods, right? Um, we grew up in the 70s where 
there was mixed income and folks had jobs and they took care of their lawns and they planted flowers and kids went to school and they listened to adults. So when somebody told you to get off their lawn and you didn't, they were gonna tell your mother and your mother wouldn't curse them out. They would actually beat your behind. You know, we rode our bikes. I had one of those banana bikes with the seats. Mine was white and purple with the big handlebars. And the big deal was not just learning how to ride a two-wheeler, but being allowed to ride around the block. That was a big deal. We had our corner store where you could get uh, milk and bread. We also called it the liquor store because they sold liquor. But there were people who went there for liquor, but most people went there for Wonder Bread. And that's where your mother would send you, and you could also get your penny candy. Back then, I, I used to get for a quarter, you could get a bag of candy, including your Nihilators. You didn't know anything about Nihilators. It wasn't until I was like 30 that I realized that it was called Now or Later. I just thought it was one word, annihilated. <laughs> you know, um, that's when stepping outside of your comfort zone for young kids, this is why it's important to join things and to try things and to become a part of something bigger than yourself because oftentimes that's where your new community of support will come from. And you can't be afraid. So you don't find support just sitting in your room on the phone tweeting and texting and selfieing, you know, then you will be alone. Um, but look around and find youth groups in your church and at the YMCA and the boys and girls clubs. Join things, get out of your room, get out of your comfort zone and find places to go so that you can meet new people. Um, that's how kids who come from less do it. You know, they're, they're finding people outside of their homes who are giving them that, that love and that attention. Um, I've realized in the last few months that um, what's for me is for me. And if it's not, then that's okay too, right? So go ahead, do it, give it 110%, um, start to connect and cultivate, uh, build relationships with people and whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, right? And so I am in no less of a position uh, by building those relationships, by putting myself out there um, that I would have been before. Um, she also, you know, mentioned kind of making those connections and, and making sure that you are doing things a little bit different and stepping outside of the box and thinking outside of the box and trying to, and that's the important thing about connections is because you, you know, we only know what you only know what you know. And so when you, you know, make those connections and you kind of, you know, do that brainstorming and connect and, and get ideas from other people, it, it's stuff that you've never even thought of. And I'm just like, my gosh, there's connections you would never even think to make. There's people in that can come into your life that you're like, you know, I would have never guessed that we'd be this close or that this person would help me to achieve this one thing, this one goal, whatever it is. Trying to make and cultivate, not just make a connection, but really to cultivate, to grow that relationship and to build on it um, is something that's important to me in 2019. I have people that I love dearly who stop growing because the notion of pushing beyond what they know and what's comfortable was just so frightening and terrifying that it felt better to just stay put. Um, and practicing living with your fear because that, that fear is a part of the transition. And if you can just get used to it, you know, if you can get used to the fact that the fear comes in a wave and it goes away that even the new stuff becomes old and it becomes welcoming and it becomes familiar. And for me, I've had the, the beauty of practicing that fear, practicing transitions, practicing that leaving one thing and moving to the next thing isn't terrifying. It's, it's fear of those who don't understand what you're trying to do. And no one really, we don't articulate that, that that's an additional struggle. That there's so many kids who are in college right now who are as first generation kids whose families don't understand where they're trying to go. And oh, you know, that piece right there was so moving, right? Um, another thing that she talked about that I felt like hit home for me 
was when she talked about like the people around you. You know what I mean? You have to really be careful. And I've learned this, especially in 2018, about who you have around you and the influence and the impact that you don't even realize. The influence and the impact that they have on you and your direction and your trajectory. Past all that stuff that they're reading and they're hearing. And that's how I got through it. I got through it by doing the work. People got me through it. So when people, when, when I'm called a hugger, you know, it's, it's not a one-way street. I mean, I'm getting energy from people and there's plenty of it. There was plenty of it out there. There was plenty of good all the time. There was plenty of good energy, regardless of race or party. People have a hard time hating up close. And I write about that in, in the book. It's, it's, it's hard to, you know, for somebody to sit here and to hear me talk as a regular person and to believe it, it's like two different worlds. It's like, well, they say that you're a Godzilla hating, horrible person who doesn't, whatever. I don't know what the, the fears are, but because I don't watch that stuff. But when you're talking to people and you're right there with folks and you're, you're talking honestly, people smell authenticity. They know the difference. And that was what I, that, that's how I got through it by just getting out there and meeting people directly and not letting my impressions of other people be fil filtered through some other channel. So, so the, the, <laughs> the other piece that I wanted to share, the last piece I'll probably share with you um, is um, her um, connection with Barack. So it was funny because, you know, the entire show and, or tour and, and the conversation she was having, she rarely talked about Barack, right? Because he didn't come into her life until she was an adult. So, you know, um, and so I thought it was interesting in how they met and kind of, you know, started, you know, having their eye on each other. And it's like, this is Barack Obama in that voice. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> Like, okay, come to the office, and as he said, he was late. So, when he was late, I'm talking to my secretary. I was like, This trifling, yeah. so -so. It's like, he's like one of like three black associates, a summer associates, and he's gonna be late. And I was about to tell him another thing, and then I walk out, and it's like, Oh, <laughs> you're not what I expected. <laughs> Until next time, my faves. Bye.